Hello, people of Earth, astronauts of all ages. Welcome to Spacecraft. Hello, Science Officer Millie here reporting. This week's episode is all about, you guessed it, astronauts. Specifically, all about astronauts in isolation. Now, a lot of us have been spending more time indoors lately, also in isolation, probably stuck there with our crewmates, aka our family or whoever we live with. So, to learn about how to best spend our time in isolation, we're going to learn from some astronauts about how they do it, both when they're up in space on the International Space Station and before and after a mission to make sure that they stay healthy. Let's take a look. Before launching into space on a mission, astronauts spend at least two weeks in quarantine, which means that they're completely isolated from everyone, friends, family. Usually the only people they're allowed to see is the flight surgeon, which is the doctor that stays on Earth to make sure that everyone is healthy during the mission. Usually astronauts have to say hey to their friends and family through glass, like this. Now this quarantine, this barrier, is to make sure that they don't get a cold or a flu or any sort of transmittable disease before they go up into space. Now one of the main reasons why we do this quarantine is back in 1968 on the Apollo 7 mission with NASA, all three of the astronauts got a head cold up in space. Now having a cold down here on Earth is pretty miserable, but in space it's even worse. During their 11 day mission they ran out of medication and even tissues to blow their nose. And down here on Earth, we have the gravity from our planet pulling down. And this helps us when we're sick because it pulls all the boogers out of our nose. But up in space, you're experiencing microgravity. So there isn't that gravity to pull all the snot out of your face. And it's really unpleasant. I don't like thinking about it. They were so miserable, in fact, that when they were going back down to Earth during re-entry, they actually disobeyed one of their orders. Re-entering Earth's atmosphere from space is one of the most dangerous parts of the mission. So it's always recommended that astronauts wear their helmets, like we see here. Now the helmets in the Apollo 7 mission were kind of an older design. They didn't have visors, like my helmet, to allow them to get in there and blow their noses. So the astronauts in the mission actually didn't wear their helmets during re-entry. They disobeyed NASA's orders, which was really dangerous. Imagine how bad that snot must have been. Because these astronauts were a little bit naughty and disobeyed NASA's orders, even though they had good reason to, they didn't receive their Distinguished Service Medals right away. All of the other astronauts on the Apollo missions got a Distinguished Service Medal right away, right when they got back to Earth. But these astronauts actually had to wait 40 years to get their medal. This reminds me of another brave spacefarer who got their medal 40 years too late. Some of you may remember, at the end of Star Wars A New Hope, after the Battle of the Death Star, Han and Luke received their medals right away from Princess Leia, but Chewie, the Wookiee, did not. He, in fact, had to also wait about 40 years to receive his medal. Ridiculous. These images are owned by Lucasfilm Limited and Disney, by the way. We don't own these images. They're not ours. So the space cold fiasco led us to now have a two week quarantine, at least, before astronauts go into space. We call this health stabilization to make sure that their health is stable. A little while after the Apollo 7 mission was the Apollo 11 mission, when people actually first walked on the moon. Now this brought a whole new challenge to isolation and quarantine before and after a mission, because back then we didn't actually know what we would find on the moon. We didn't know if it was going to be completely barren and covered in rock. Scientists were actually worried about moon bugs or moon sickness that the astronauts might bring back with them. So when they got back to Earth, all three of the astronauts on the mission, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, were put in a super high-tech camper van. No, seriously. So this is an Airstream trailer that NASA retrofitted to turn into a quarantine module. The Mobile Quarantine Facility, which is NASA for motor home. Pretty cool. Now during this time they were able to see their family, which was good because they had just been on the moon, but 
they were only able to see them through the window in the Airstream trailer. Here it's them looking at their wives <laughs> through the camper van window. <laughs> During this quarantine period, which was about a month, the three astronauts had to, like us right now, learn some different ways of keeping themselves occupied. And Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon, actually picked up the ukulele. Here he is playing his ukulele. Pretty cute. Now, I also have my ukulele here. This is Valentina, my ukulele. She has a rocket ship on her. Um, I name all of my musical instruments, and she is named after Valentina Tereshkova, who was the first woman in space and one of my personal heroes. She was a Russian cosmonaut and still is a very influential engineer. She's really cool. Uh, so I'm going to play a song for you, just like Neil Armstrong did in isolation, uh, because I'm also in isolation. So I learned this one this morning. <clears throat> I'm going to play. Yeah. <clears throat> Play the song. There's a starman waiting in the sky. He'd like to come and meet us, but he thinks he'd blow our minds. There's a starman waiting in the sky. I'm a I'm a scientist, not a singer, guys. I'm sorry. Anyways, that's enough of a musical interlude for today. The next astronauts we're going to talk about actually just went up into space yesterday. These are the members of Expedition 63, and they actually went up to the International Space Station from Kazakhstan in the Soyuz rocket yesterday on April 9th, 2020. Here they go. Here we're going to see them prepare for their launch. Now, as we can see, all of the flight surgeons and engineers getting them ready here all have face masks on so they don't get any earth sickness before they go into space. There they are waving. It kind of looks like I'm also part of their crew about to go to space, but I'm not, sadly. Here they are. This is the Soyuz rocket about to lift off. There they go. Uh, now this is my favorite. This is the crew uh, of Expedition 63 meeting up with the three astronauts who were already on the International Space Station. So these three astronauts up there have been by themselves for three months. Uh, they haven't seen any other people. Uh, they've been completely in isolation. And now they have three new friends to hang out with. Which, if you've been stuck inside with the same three people for a long time, uh, Getting some new friends is pretty refreshing. Before he went up to the International Space Station, NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy, who is a member of Expedition 63, he was on that rocket ship that we just saw blast into space, gave some advice for people on Earth currently living in isolation. He says one of the most important things is to get yourself into a schedule. Make sure that you're getting up at the same time every day. Make sure that you're doing nice things for yourself, getting into a routine. And also make sure that you're aware of your crewmate schedules. So for example, if you have parents that might be working from home, getting to know their schedule and also respecting what they need to do with their spaceship day really makes the day in isolation go by a lot easier. Another astronaut who has been recently interviewed about isolation and her time in space is Peggy Whitson, who commanded the International Space Station and has been in space longer than any other American for a total of 665 days. Her nickname is the Space Ninja. I want a cool nickname like that at some point. I want to be the Space Ninja. I mean, Science Officer Millie is pretty cool. But, like, Space Ninja is better. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> now, Peggy Whitson says, when we have a difficult mission, like being in space or being stuck inside for long periods of time, the best thing to remember is how we're helping other people. So, in space, we're helping people by learning more about space and living in space, contributing to scientific discoveries. And while we're inside, we're keeping people healthy by not spreading disease which is really important right now. So be like Peggy Whitson. Remember the good things that you're doing to help other people, the higher purpose of why we are currently in isolation. I think that's really nice. Just think about how, it be, how you're helping other people. Yeah. 
One last astronaut who has been giving some really cool advice about how to live in isolation is Anne McLean, who is another American astronaut who was a part of Expedition 58. She was on the International Space Station for six whole months, and she actually just got back last year in June, so about a year ago. Now, she talks about how important communication is when we're in isolation, making sure that we're communicating well with our crew members and finding fun ways of communicating as well. She outlined on her Twitter some key points about communicating while in isolation. Number one was keep communication clear, frequent, and honest. So make sure that you're communicating a lot with your crewmates, your family or your roommates that you're stuck with, and make sure that you're being honest about how you're feeling and what's going on for you. Number two, know when to take the lead and when to follow. This is important with communication. We need to learn when to take charge, whether it's cleaning up, doing chores, helping out our crewmates, or when to follow, when to follow instructions. Maybe our crewmates need our help. Number three, be aware of your own feelings and how they affect others. So really check in with yourself right now. Really be aware about how you're feeling. How's it feeling being stuck inside all the time? What kind of emotions are coming up for you? And communicate these emotions with your crewmates so they know what's going on with you. And that way they'll know how best to help you as well. Number four is practice patience and compassion. Now is a really important time to practice being really kind to other people. Whether it's checking in on a friend on the phone, asking how they're doing, making sure that you're checking in on your family, your crewmates, and just doing nice things for people. Number five is work together and keep calm. Remember, you're a team with all your crewmates inside, so make sure that you're all working together. That again is Anne McLean's five points for communication while being inside in isolation. She's pretty cool. She knows how to communicate. So I wanted to follow the advice of these very cool astronauts and come up with some neat ways of communicating with my crew member that I'm isolated from, Craft Commander Green. So I wrote her this letter that has a secret space question that I want her to answer. It's kind of like a game so we can pass a letter back and forth and find fun new ways to communicate with each other while we're separated from each other. Because I really miss her. We're in different places right now and it's hard, but at least we get to talk about space together and that makes me feel a lot better. And we get to hang out with you guys, which is really fun. I'm gonna pass that over to her there. Thanks for joining me for this space talk for this episode of Spacecraft. I'm gonna pass you over to Craft Commander Green and she is going to teach you how to make some moon bugs of your own. But remember, don't catch any moon bugs, stay inside, stay safe, and help your crewmates. Look at this, I got a letter from Science Officer Millie. I love letters is so nice. Uh, well, she was talking about how astronauts in isolation, they focus on good communication with their crewmates in order to make isolation a more positive experience. And here my crewmate Millie has sent me this letter. Let's see what it says. Uh, she says, Dear Craft Commander Green, that's me, uh, could you tell us what is your favorite planet in the solar system and why? Easy. My favorite planet is Jupiter. The reason I love Jupiter uh, first of all, it is so gigantic, you could fit 1,300 Earths inside of it, which makes my brain go, it's mind-blowing. I love just thinking about how huge it is. Uh, the other thing I love about Jupiter is the way it looks. It's beautiful. It's made up of mostly hydrogen and helium gases, but the center of the planet is super hot. So all that hot gas bubbles up trying to escape, and that creates all those swirling storms that we see. The other thing I love about Jupiter is that it's home to very unusual moons. My favorite of those moons is called Io. It's covered in volcanoes that are spewing out not only red lava, but also green and yellow lava, molten sulfur. So just a very unusual place. All right, thank you, Millie. I'll be sending you back a letter. And this brings me to a challenge for all of you. So thinking about you know, communicating with our crew members, I would love you to write your own letter or draw a picture for someone that you're at home with. We're all at home a lot these days, so wouldn't it be fun to send them a letter, maybe ask them some questions, and they can send it back to you. Uh, passing notes can be fun. All right, so that's your challenge. On to our craft. This week we are going to be making moon bug finger puppets. It should be a lot of fun, so let's get started. Okie dokie, my space-loving friends. It's time for us to make some moon bug finger puppets. 
Look at these little weirdos, very cute. All right, for this project, you won't need much. You just need a piece of paper, any kind of paper will do, a pencil, maybe an eraser, a fine-tipped black pen, and then any medium you like to bring in color. I'm using watercolors, but you could use crayons or felt pens or pencil crayons. The first thing we're doing is folding our piece of paper right down the middle lengthwise. And while it's still folded, you're going to cut strips out of it, and each one of these strips is a finger puppet, so make sure they're wide enough that your finger can fit with a little bit of room on either side for glue. Okay, now that mine are cut, I'm going to glue the sides together using a glue stick. You could use any kind of glue or you can use tape. Just putting a little bit on either side here, making sure there's none in the middle because that's where my finger will go. Now I'm bringing the top down and I'm gonna make sure those sides are really stuck together because I don't want it to fall apart once I, I put my finger inside the paper. All right, so before I start drawing on my finger puppets, I like to do practice drawings in my sketchbook. This one here that I'm drawing is called the Moon Bug Moon Bug because its body looks like the moon with craters, and I've given it sort of an astronaut's helmet and some antennae there and lots of legs. All of the moon bugs that I'm drawing are different from one another, but they all share uh, some of the same features. Each one has a body, and then each one has either tentacles or legs and eyes, of course. This one has nine eyes, because why not? And then I give each bug feelers or antennae. This one has wings. And this is a neat way to do a body. You can do sort of a squiggly line on either side and then connect those squiggles to create a segmented body. So similar to a worm. And then these eyes are classic bug eyes with this sort of curved grid. And I'm giving this bug some weird long feeler tentacle things overlapping them. But what's great about this project is really there's no wrong way to draw your moon bugs. You're making them up using your imagination. So yeah, just go for it. Draw whatever comes to mind. This one has a cute little smile. <laughs> so you can see I've done a lot of different versions of my moon bugs. And once I choose my favorites, then I redraw them onto the finger puppets. And then it's time to color them in. So as I mentioned, I'm going to use watercolor paint, but you can use felts, crayons, or pencil crayons. Because I'm not using uh, watercolor paper, just paper from my sketchbook, I made sure not to use a lot of water with my paint or else it could tear or buckle the paper. There I am filling in the mandibles. And the colors I've chosen to use are very springy. So I chose four colors and then those same four colors I'm using for all of my moon bugs. So they all sort of go together, but you can use whatever colors you like. And once your paint's dry, you can start to outline your moon bugs using a thin tipped black pen. So I'm using my Micron here. And as I fill in these eyes, I'm going to be careful to leave a little bit of white so the eyes look super shiny. You can also use your pen to make more details. So you could do polka dots or stripes. And I think the trick here is to go real quick. Don't try to make everything perfect. If you go faster, your line work has more energy. I think it's more exciting this way. And once you've done this to all of your moon bugs, you're ready to put on a show. Here are my little guys. Hey, everybody, do, 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 dancing around. So this would be a nice thing to do for one of your crewmates. Okay, now it is your turn to make some moon bugs. Don't forget to photograph your work. And if you post it, hashtag spacecraft moon bugs, or you can send them directly to us. Our email is in the description below, and then we can post your work at the end of a show, just like this work here by Buddy and Arlo Bloomfield, some beautiful watercolor planets. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and today we have a special treat. Science Officer Millie will sing us out. Another song on Valentina. Here we go. I'll work on it. Oh. 
I'll workshop it. By the time Commander Green gets back, I'll be really good at the ukulele, guys. You just 